Ryan Pitchers, why are people happy this YouTuber died? Yeah, I was kind of wondering the same question, which, I, which is why I wanted to watch How this. does a YouTuber with over 2 million subscribers get involved in some of the worst accusations on the internet, only to be found dead okay, of a that, potential Okay, that, yeah, I remember that situation. That makes sense. I can understand. Overdose at the age of 23, have his death is, memed on by hundreds of thousands of people yeah. online, and still be caught in the middle of sexual harassment and pedophilia allegations. This is the entire unhinged story of Tumad, and how a couple of harmful accusations ultimately led to his death. Tumad has always been known for his edgy content on YouTube, striking viral gold with a video that amassed over 16 million views. The video showcased him crashing online college classes via Zoom, which ended up exploding his fame and earned them a spot in the local news. This video would become one of the most well-known videos in his harassment series, which capitalized on people's need to watch cringe content. In the series, Tumad would randomly join Zoom calls and head to conventions or other public events like K-pop concerts and Discord moderator meetings to troll and provoke people attending. However, Tumad's steady rise to fame would be put into question a few years into his career when a Twitter user named Glocks Goldie shared a screenshot of a Discord chat where two met suggested watching violent videos together. Additionally, Glocks Yo, Goldie- I got some epic shooting videos I can show you. I got- who the hell said- if anyone ever says that to you, bruh, run the hell away. I got some epic shooting videos I can show you? Bro, you need to exit right now. Like, if someone, like, you need to leave, block. They need to be blocked. With Discord chat, where Tumad suggested watching violent videos together. Additionally, Glocks Goldie posted a video from Tumad apologizing for what she interpreted as inappropriate behavior. Tumad spoke against the video's context, stating that the words weren't his, but written by Glocks Goldie's friend and so read by him that? on camera. How was that not? I at least want to take responsibility for what the fuck I did. You know, the, the, like the way I treated you and like viewed you, um, this is not like okay. Like I pushed past your your fucking boundaries just for like my my own fucking self-serving reasons. I made like like sexual advances you weren't com comfortable with. You know what I mean? And I I, I truly do like regret all of that like so much. He later claimed that he made the video in a misguided attempt to pursue a relationship with Glock Goldie what? rather than as an apology for any misconduct. Over the following days, Glock Goldie shared so more- So you just tried to say sorry so you can get with her? Like, I'm sorry for damn near sexually assaulting you. I'm sorry for, like, absolutely breaking through your boundaries. But like, can we still be together? Screenshots of their interactions with him, with Tumad responding defensively and still denying it up to his death. After this, Tumad would continue to make videos as if there was nothing wrong. His views didn't even seem to dip, and people quickly forgot or simply ignored these allegations until his sudden hiatus on YouTube in August of 2022. While Tumad had stopped posting on YouTube, he would still continue to be active on Twitter. That was until February 9, 2024, only four days before his death. On February 13, 2024, an unidentified caller reached out and contacted authorities for a wellness check stating that they were concerned about two men's well-being since he hadn't been in touch been. with them for days. Oh, LAPD no. officers responded and arrived at the scene. They found him non-responsive and quickly discovered him to be deceased. The officers oh, also found drug-related items at the scene and stated that no signs of foul play were detected in the investigation. Subsequently, authorities determined that he'd passed away due to a drug overdose. When news of his death reached the internet, it's safe to say that many users' reactions well, were not very pleasant. He was getting memed on twitter i was just shocked i was like i mean i guess if, if like you you deem somebody as a bad person and they die no one's gonna give a fuck i just i guess i was just in shut in i don't know it was just crazy i was just like like i get he did some crazy stuff but was he really that bad you know those are the, like i i would call them mistakes there were some pretty big mistakes i mean but they weren't like unforgivable right no. Twitter was filled with memes and disturbing comments about Tumad's death, especially due to the rumor that he died while high and apparently in the middle of playing Overwatch. This oh, is when, man. only a few hours after news of his death was broken to the internet, Zestel and Jameski, two fellow content creators, came forward with allegations against him, accusing him of sexual harassment and pedophilia. Oh, the very first post was made by Jameski, oh, who said, no. I can finally say it, Tumad was a 
and a pedophile. Over the past few years, he tried to murder me multiple times for helping the police and detectives in multiple states to investigate a lot of horrible things he's done. These were very, very serious claims, and many people were shocked to hear that two men had supposedly tried to murder Jameski. But that wasn't the full extent of it. Jameski would even go as oh, far as no. to accuse two men of attempting to murder various other people. He what? wanted to take on multiple innocent lives by getting behind a wheel and going head on on a freeway while being high on illegal drugs. He didn't succeed once as he overdosed before killing anybody, so he tried it again. Despite him trying to murder me and multiple innocent lives, I've been trying to help law enforcement to make sure he's safe, doesn't get hurt, and doesn't harm anybody. At the end of his tweet, Jameski states that while Tumad may be dead, people shouldn't forget or forgive what he's done while still alive. That's Please fair. remember that he's a and a pedophile. He continued to prey on the vulnerable even after the police got involved, including a 13 year old in a mental hospital. The tragedy doesn't excuse any of his actions. I will address a lot of stuff when I fully collect my thoughts. In response to Jameski's tweet, Zastella would end up posting about her own experience on Twitter saying, To matter oh me for God. months on my socials and spam me with dozens of messages saying how obsessed he was and how much he needed to R word me. When asked for proof, Zastella replied with a screenshot of a conversation between All that. Oi, you're in LA? Let me sigh you with a minor? What? <laughs> Nigga, what? <laughs> All, all that. Oi, you're in LA? Let me saw you with a mic. Bro, what? Please. Between her and Tumad. With these allegations out in the open, there was an outpour of support for the two victims, with many people claiming to make memes and tweets about Tumad's death in order to prove that being a horrible person in life doesn't make them suddenly worthy of praise once they are dead. While most people on the internet seem to agree with this sentiment, there is one person who didn't, and that's the famous Twitch Minx. streamer Justin Minx. Shortly after Jameski shared a tweet detailing his encounters with Tumad, Minx responded quickly, labeling Jameski's tweet as insane given Tumad's recent passing. Despite working on a lawsuit against Tumad, Minx expressed her disapproval of Jameski's tweet. On February 16, Jameski stated in a tweet that he'd obtained confirmation, allowing him to reveal more details about Tumad's allegations. It's here that he stated that Justin Minx was actively involved in obstructing their investigation. Just got a full confirmation that I can tell the public that you actively interfered with investigations and assisted Tumad by revealing confidential information provided by the authorities. Additionally, Jameski claimed that Minx had encouraged Tumad to take harmful actions against himself. He continues Aww. his tweet by saying, you also encouraged him to kill himself for hours before the tragedy. You even talked about it on streams. This is most evident oh in the clip God. that Jameski would share, where Minx states that she wants to met himself in the middle of one of her streams. And him holding a gun to her head. Yeah, I hope he gets up too. And by help, I mean I hope he learns how to tie a noose. Oh my God. In a video game. Talk about dark. What the fuck? She said that with such like a, a straight face. It was too scary though. There was no expression there. It, it was no expression there and it kind of scared me a little bit. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. He would also go on to say that Minx's tweet about helping out with the lawsuit was just completely false because there was no lawsuit. Of all people, she knew that there was never a lawsuit. In fact, she's contributed quite a lot to a lot of stuff that happened over the years involving Tumad and his victims. She switched sides back to back. Furthermore, Jameski shared a 645 word statement on his Twitter account outlining the continuous threats that had been made to his life. He emphasized the severity of the situation, revealing that he was advised to wear a sealed bulletproof vest whenever he went out in public. What? He also supports his allegations by stating, I don't think I need to explain why I was not talking about it publicly. But if multiple people coming forward confirming what I said is true isn't enough, a lot of information is now public records and can be accessed by anyone. Alongside his tweet, he also shares multiple photos as evidence. These being what appears to be the police standing outside someone's home, a bullet hole in the glass, some documents, oh and my. his emergency room bills. James Key would even include a photo of his bulletproof vest when one user asked for it. It. Minx would respond to Jameski's call out with her own tweet, saying that she struggles with mental health issues and acknowledged that they might have led her to speak negatively about Tumad to the point of telling him to kill himself. However, she clarified that her intention was not to slander a man who had recently passed away. Tumad's passing was a shock that no one was prepared for, and despite the fact that he was an absolute kid, I was shocked to see people jump to slander him without even mourning his death or thinking about his family. At the end of her tweet, she would mention the non-existent lawsuit stating, I also don't understand how I f***ed with the lawsuit and I'm disappointed point that Jameski just said that with no evidence. The thing that Minx doesn't seem to understand, and what Jameski and other users on Twitter were trying to get her to understand, is that there is no lawsuit, and 
and the worst thing that Minx had ever done was speak publicly about the investigation involving Tumad, even going as far as to reveal incredibly private information about how the police were going to track him in one of her streams. This dumbass doesn't realize when I answer them, I can track his location, not me personally, sorry. The police can and see where it came from. If I don't answer it, I can't. And that's what they advised me to do. They said, don't talk to him, just answer it. And then you just show us the call and they can track where he goes to right now. Jamski oh continues to post evidence about his allegations against oh Tumad on Twitter, with his latest being some footage suggesting that Tumad had owned real firearms, along with a photo supposedly showing him pointing a pistol at a 13 year old girl. The thing that. What? Yo, I'm sorry, but it's like it, the, 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 the trend seems to be villains today. It seems to be freaking being a villain. What the hell? What the hell? The trend today seems to be being a freaking villain. Dude, what? That most people don't know is that this isn't the first time James Ski has spoken out against Tumad. Because in 2019, James Ski posted a tweet longer simply titled, My Experience yes, with Tumad. Too. This is even earlier than Glock's Goldie's first allegations against Tumad, which only proves that James Ski has been trying to call out Tumad for years now. It all started when James Ski offered Tumad help with moving and setting up in the US, even offering a room for rent. However, oh, wow. James Ski later questioned whether Tumad was financially ready to move to LA, and later on, realized that Tumad was not only manipulating him, but also had been lying to him, with these allegations greatly upsetting Tumad. Tumad, on the other hand, posted a now deleted video about how upset he was for not getting the level of help he expected, and tried to turn the situation to his advantage by pointing out Jameski's Russian background and accusing him of spreading rumors. Because of this video, Jameski ended up being attacked online by thousands of Tumad's viewers. Apparently, Tumad had also reached out to other YouTubers, seeking to turn them against Jameski. In Jameski's oh, wow. sweat longer, he writes, My experience with Tumad, especially recently, recently hasn't been very pleasant, neither for me nor for some of our friends. I wanted to keep it in private and not bring it to the public, but this has been going on for too long and he just tried to manipulate the public, so I had enough of this. During a Rainbow Six tournament, two men Most recently, he lied to me and our mutual friend about getting kicked out of his house and about his financial situation. He was claiming he's only got few months and that he needs help to move to Los Angeles, question mark, question mark. I offered him help because he's my friend and he's only 18 and doesn't understand a lot of shit in life. I convinced my housemate that even though he's young, he's chilling, that we can help him out and direct him in the right direction. On top of that, I gave him a call on rent pay for the first few months so he can save some money. At the time, I didn't know that his intentions were to move to LA. I, did, I didn't know that his intentions were to move to LA were just for clout. But more about that later. He just tried to manipulate the public, so I had enough of this. What? During a rainbow. Didn't know that his intentions to move to LA were just for clout. He's a YouTuber, bro. What the hell? How the hell did you not know that a YouTuber's intentions to move to LA was for nigga? What? I thought that was gonna be the deal. Like, yeah, bro, you moved to LA. You know that you can, you can, you can get some clout over it. nigga. What? Six tournament, Tumad targeted James Key with relentless harassment, encouraging others to mock his speech issues in front of thousands of viewers. Despite James Key's attempts to address the issue directly, Tumad's behavior persisted. There's a fine line between banter, roasting your rivals, and just being a prick. I didn't know about most of it, and I was really confused by this. I got a vibe that Tumad held a grudge on me due to the amount of shots he fired at me. Upon Tumad's arrival in LA, his behavior became increasingly evasive and manipulative towards James Key. He avoided spending time with him, opting to engage with others while disregarding invitations. All of this would hit the fan the moment that James Ski learned that Tumad had lied to him about his true intentions when he moved to LA. First of all, him getting kicked out within a few months suddenly changed to I just want to move, move out, out and that he wants to move to LA because it's where you make it big. Huge twist of the situation if you ask me. He also took it as a personal attack, kept assuming we no longer want him in the house or something like that, which we denied. Tumad's manipulative behavior and disregard for James Ski's well-being became apparent, prompting James Ski to share his experience with trusted friends. However, instead of addressing the issues directly, Tumad chose to publicly attack James Key, distorting the truth and attempting to manipulate others against him. What's strange is that many people seem to disregard James Key's response to Tumad, and these allegations eventually fell from the internet's attention, which leads us to the present with James Ski once again trying to bring Tumad's darker side to light. While these allegations unfold, all people can really do is wait for James Ski to unveil more information about Tumad and hope that soon, the full extent of Tumad's degeneracy is unveiled to the rest of the internet. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, the, the trend is definitely villainry today, guys. Villain, villainry, bro.
villain re i don't know how to even tell you bro 